If you need to add someone on title of your real estate in order to qualify for a mortgage, should you do it? What's the biggest legal problems with co-owning a house with your child or a friend or a relative? In this video, I'm gonna explain why it's usually not the best idea to put another person on title just so that you can refinance or get a mortgage. And I'm also gonna share with you, if you do put someone on title, what's the best way to do it in this video today? Now, before we get started, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, hit the subscribe button to get notified whenever I post a new video about living trusts as well as home ownership. By the way, my name is Edmund Yan. I am a living trust lawyer. I've helped hundreds of families and I've taught over 3,000 people how to do it themselves. And I'm excited to share my tips and tricks with you today. If you own a home, and you wanna learn the entire process of how to make a living trust the right way without hiring a lawyer, check out my free trust class at freetrustclass.com. The link is in the description below. Uh, and even if you're hiring a lawyer and, and you're planning to hire one, watch this class first to know the entire process and how to hire the right lawyer. And by the way, really quick legal disclaimer, I'm not your lawyer. I'm not giving you any legal advice today. All of this is just information. If you have any legal questions, talk to a lawyer. So why is it such a bad idea to co-own real estate? So even if you're putting someone on title just to qualify for a mortgage or to refinance, let's say you don't have um, the income to refinance or get a mortgage, you need to put someone else, like a brother, a sister, a parent, or a friend on title in order to qualify, uh, that's usually a bad idea for these numbers of reasons. So for example, if that person um, is subject to a lawsuit, let's say they're getting sued, or they have creditors claims against them, or they're getting divorced, or they're filing for bankruptcy, then you could potentially lose the house because they're a co-owner. And so it's technically their asset, which means that if they are in a lawsuit, um, the plaintiff can put a lien on the property in order to um, satisfy the judgment. If they get uh, divorced, the divorcing spouse could potentially have a claim on your property. And if you get, uh, if, if they uh, file for bankruptcy, same, same issue. If they have creditors, same issue. And so that's the number one reason that I advise people on in terms of, um, is it really a good idea? Is the, is the benefit, um, uh, does the benefit outweigh the risks and so you have to really understand what the risks are as opposed to the benefits and weigh them before you decide to get a mortgage out with someone uh, that's not your spouse another reason uh, you won't be able to sell or refinance the property without that person's consent and so that could be a problem um, there could be a probate issue so what if that person dies what happens to their interest does their interest end up in probate court uh, that can cause a lot of the illegal issues for you because who's going to inherit their percentage? Does it go to their spouse? Does it go to their children? Um, do you have an arrangement where their interest goes to you, but because of the probate issue, it actually doesn't go to you? And so now you have um, someone that you might not know to be the co-owner of the house that you own. So there could be some probate issues involved. Also property tax issues. If you put someone on title, uh, your property tax could double or triple depending on the situation. So really understand your local rules and make sure that your property taxes won't get reassessed. Or later on, if, if you remove that person, let's say five, 10 years, 15 years later, you remove that person from title after the mortgage is paid off, make sure that there's a way to avoid any property tax increases when that actually happens. And also, uh, you could potentially accidentally disinherit your kids. So for example, if you own this property as joint tenants with that person and you pass away first, your interest could go to that person, which means that your kids, if it's not your kids, uh, would be left without the house. So. A lot of people, they accidentally disinherit their kids when they do this. So make sure that you understand the difference between joint tenancy and tenants in common and see what's the best way to hold title with someone else that's not your spouse. Um, another issue to, to be mindful of, you might get kicked out or you might be forced to sell the property. 
uh, when, when you and that co-owner has a disagreement, and so that's a big problem. Medicare, Medi-Cal recovery, that's another problem that most people don't think about. When, uh, when someone's on Medicare or, or Medi-Cal in California, Medicare is the federal program. Medi-Cal is the California program for, for Medicare. Um, a lot of people use that for nursing care, assisted living facility um, costs, uh, when they're disabled or they need care. Uh, if you're on these programs, these programs are actually not free. It's actually an interest-free loan. And after you pass away, or a person passes away, uh, the government can actually go after the estate of that person in order to recover every single dime that Medi-Cal or Medicare spent on their behalf. And so if your co-owner is on Medicare or Medi-Cal and they pass away and um, the house ends up in probate, potentially uh, Medi-Cal and Medicare would force you to pay them in order to keep the house. So that's another issue um, that could potentially um, arise regarding co-ownership in terms of um, getting a mortgage or, or refinancing. So if you don't have to, okay, don't put someone on title, even your child, even a friend, a close friend or a close relative, because all these issues could potentially arise. Now, what if you're in a situation where you have to, you have to put someone on title. Let's say you're buying your dream home and uh, the only way to qualify is to put someone on title in order to, for, for them to also be part of the mortgage. So if you really, really, really have to do it, okay, this is how you should do it. Number one, give that person as little as possible, meaning don't give them half. If it's just you and them, don't give them 50%, give them 1%, okay, give them 1%. That's the starting point. Um, you'll have to ask your lender if they allow you to, to put them as a 1% owner. So uh, talk to the lender um, well in advance to see if that's possible. So you would give them 1% and you keep 99%. Another thing to do is to own the property as tenants in common. Tenants in common means that when, when one owner dies, the other owner doesn't automatically inherit 100% of the property. If you owned it as joint tenants, that would happen. So if it's joint tenancy, that means that the surviving owner or owners would receive the dead owner's interest. So if it's two owners, one owner dies, the surviving owner would receive 100% of the property upon the death of the first one. And like I mentioned earlier, that's a big problem, especially if it's a friend or a distant relative and you actually don't wanna give it to them upon your passing, you wanna make sure that you don't own the property as joint tenants. And, and so what you would do is you would own it as tenants in common. And the third thing that I would, um, I would do uh, would be every owner should put their interest in their own revocable living trust. So let's say um, you have a friend on title to qualify for a loan. Um, I, I recommend that you not only own it as tenants in common, but that each one of you put your interests into your trust. So you would put your 50% in your trust and they would put their 50% in their trust, which means that if one of you pass, uh, that person's interest would not end up in probate. If you own the property as tenants in common and one of you passed away, no trust for either person, that person's interest would end up in probate, which is not a great, Thing to do um, especially with real estate because probate can be so expensive and it takes so long so make sure that each one of you has a trust and that you have the trust own your respective interests so if you own 50 percent have a deed that transfers title your 50 percent into your trust and last but not least in their living trust um, they should name you as the beneficiary of the house so if you own a property with your friend um, make sure that their trust says you're the beneficiary of this house that you co-own uh, in the event that that person passes before you. Okay, so those are some of the general things that I would do. Of course, you know, I'm not giving you any legal advice. I'm just giving you information. And so every situation is different. Um, if you have any legal questions, you should definitely talk to a lawyer in your state. But this is at the minimum what you should definitely do when you co-own property 
with someone like a friend or a business partner or a distant relative. If you don't want them to inherit your property, you want to make sure you do all this. If you don't mind that they inherit your property, then a simple thing to do is to own the property as joint tenants. So if it's you and someone else, you would both own it 50-50, and if you pass away, it's gonna to go to them. However, remember, there's all these other issues right here to consider to determine whether or not um, you should give them 50% or you should give them joint tenancy. So those are the things to look out for when you're adding someone on title to refinance or get a mortgage. Uh, remember to educate yourself before you hire a lawyer or before you do things yourself especially when it comes to real estate because it's probably your biggest asset. And so you wanna make sure you do it right. So if you do own a home, I uh, wanna invite you to a free trust class uh, that I have. It teaches you how to make a trust without hiring a lawyer so you can protect your house from probate with confidence and without making mistakes, making sure that your house would go to the people that you love in the event of death. I'm not here to sell you my legal services. My number one goal is to make sure you keep more money in the family and give you that peace of mind that you deserve. So if you wanna learn about the entire trust process, even if you're hiring a lawyer in the future, check out my free trust class at freetrustclass.com. You can click the link on the bottom of this video. So before I leave, I wanna share this Bible verse with you. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him, Jesus, shall not perish but have eternal life. Christmas is coming up, 2022, and I just wanna remind you that God loves you so much that he gave his only son to die on the cross for you uh, and forgive you of all your sins. And all you have to do is to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and receive this new life in Christ. And it's not just about heaven, it's, it's also about now. Uh, because, for example, for myself, uh, I have this peace of mind knowing that I'm not alone in everything that I do, including running my business, my law firm. I have Jesus, I have the Holy Spirit inside of me, guiding me, giving me strategies, plans, and wisdom. And so God's here to help you. You're not here um, to, to do it yourself. God wants to commune with you. He wants to be with you. He wants to be known by you. And he wants to do life um, together with you and give you so much joy, peace, abundance, and prosperity in terms of relationship, health, and wealth. And so I wanna encourage you to seek Jesus uh, during this time of the year. Um, pray to him and watch what he does in his life. Just listen to him, listen to what he says to you. All right, so God bless you all. If you have any other questions about living trusts or home ownership, please ask me in the uh, comments below and I'll do my best to answer them for you in my next videos. All right, God bless you.